Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another Regal webinar. I'm Michael Sitar, and today's webinar is titled Big Things Do Come in Small Packages, Regal's Mid-Altitude Airborne LiDAR Mapping Sensors, the VQ-480 and 580 Mark II. What we'll cover today is uh, a few uh, discussions on sensor specifications. Of course, we'll cover the value proposition, and then we'll follow that up with some installation and some application examples. To start, it's helpful to consider the entire ALS product portfolio and where the VQ-480 and the 580 Mark II sensor fit. Regal Laser Measurement Systems is a manufacturer of high-precision survey instrumentation for the commercial surveyor. We offer a number of products that are purpose-built for many applications and platforms demanding 3D spatial information. So whether it is high-altitude wire area mapping from twin engine aircraft or low altitude power line surveying from UAS or helicopter platforms, we have solutions that will meet most application or platform requirements. Our focus today will be on our small area or mid altitude sensors, the VQ480 and 580 Mark II. These sensors fill the gap between the VUX 1LR, the VUX 240 lower altitude sensors, and the higher flying, higher productivity VQ780 1560 Mark II sensors. The VQ 480 580 Mark II sensors are a compact and lightweight LiDAR transceiver or full system solution that enables seamless integration into stabilized platforms for low to mid altitude surveys. It closes the gap, as I mentioned earlier, between the VUX and the VQ 780 1560 higher altitude sensors. Similarly, it increases area coverage rates via high density from faster platforms that are not possible with the, the lower. Uh, altitude and uh, lower sensors that we use in our UAS product lines. And it's also suitable for use on helicopters, aircrafts, or even some of the larger UAVs that are available. Aside from one key differentiating factor, the two sensors are virtually identical in feature capability. They both utilize a two megahertz laser that based on the scanning mechanism implemented, provides a 62.5% efficiency factor for the amount of points that are available for ground sampling. Essentially, a two megahertz emission rate yields a 1.25 megahertz ground sample rate. The scanner employs a three-sided rotating polygon that results in a 75 degree field of view. This wide field of view better supports single pass coverages of high density points at low altitude, given a common requirement to deliver on 1500 foot right of ways. The rotating polygon generates a matrix scan pattern that provides the appearance of a grid of points on the ground. This grid is enabled by the high velocity scanner that ensures the laser emissions are uniformly distributed in X and Y across the full field of view. The rotating polygon provides exceptional calibration stability, even as scan parameters change. And this is particularly important when performing recurring surveys with possibly different parameters. In this case, the same calibration file is typically valid for both missions. Regal uniquely offers many of our sensors as either transceivers or full solutions. As a transceiver, the 480-580 enables clients the option to create their own custom configurations and use their own existing third-party INS GPS solutions, repurposing existing equipment or standardizing on what the client is already familiar with. As a full system solution, we support the Aplanex product portfolio with a choice of mid to high accuracy solutions, depending on application and platform requirements. Other standard features include the compact size and weight, which allows for small platform integration. And we'll expand on that in a moment. The sensor incorporates LIMO connectors for more reliable connections. It uses Liza's both a CFAST removable card and an internal solid state hard disk for data storage. Integrated camera control and time stamping for numerous peripheral camera systems. And of course, with uh, Regal's traditional technology um, of full waveform processing, it has been expanded to include an online waveform processing capability. It includes also a refined algorithm for our multiple time around processing, uh, which enables high PRR and high density at high altitude over variable terrain. And this new algorithm 
results in no more density loss across MTA zones requiring interpolation. Multiple target detection capability with up to 15 targets per laser shot, depending on the selected PRR. And finally, a field proven atmospheric clutter suppression technology. This is implemented in real time to limit and reduce the amount of false returns that would necessarily be required to be filtered in a post-processing environment. What are the sensor differences and what are the differences between the two systems? Well, the primary difference is really in the emitted wavelength. It's available in one of two wavelengths with very similar range performance. In this chart to the left, you can see that we have uh, a 1550 nanometer wavelength associated with the uh, 480 and with the uh, 580, we have the 1064 nanometer wavelength. And when we translate that to an altitude performance based on those two wavelengths, you can see that the 580 is slightly higher range performance uh, than the 480. There's also a, slightly variance, a slight variance in the beam divergence. 0 0.27 milliradians uh, 1 over E is equal to 0.35 milliradians 1 over E squared. And, and so that translates to a beam footprint of approximately 35 centimeters at 1,000 meters AGL. The 580 has a beam divergence of 0.18 milliradians or a beam footprint of 25 centimeters at 1,000 meters AGL. So while a small beam footprint is desirable, the overall beam footprint on ground is similar when operating at lower altitudes with the 480 versus the higher altitudes with the 580. So let's take a closer look at the wavelength differences. The VQ480, as I mentioned, is 5, 1550 nanometers. Um, it's really uh, a wavelength that's used extensively for low-flying aircraft, particularly in helicopter and uh, UAV applications where there is stricter adherence to the ENOHD requirements for low altitude flying. However, based on that wavelength, it has uh, chain differences in susceptibility to reflectance of targets. Um, in this case, you can see that the snow, which is here in the gray line, it, while it reflects very strongly at one micron, it's heavily, it's, it's heavily absorbed or very poorly reflected at 1.5 micron. So selecting the type of application is important to the type of sensor. As I mentioned, the 580 has slightly longer range performance. Natural targets reflect more strongly. And of course, it would be suitable for snowpack measurement. And you can see here with the, uh, the you can see the separation in different types of vegetation, which would show up very well in the um, intensity information that's collected with the with the 580 sensor. What this slide shows is a comparison of an area um, that has been co-collected with the 480 and the 580. And you can see the differences when the intensity values are mapped out uh, between the reflectance of the various targets underneath the aircraft visible to the sensor. The importance of gyro stabilization for LiDAR installations is increasing. As data densities go up, there is a necessary increase in scan velocity to distribute the points effectively. So this means more scan lines per second are required. As they get closer and closer together, the scan line spacing or separation becomes more susceptible to the pitch dynamics of the aircraft. And this can cause scan lines to bunch up or spread apart. This can have a direct impact on overall point distribution and density, and ultimately can result in lack of required resolution when density varies. The VQ480-580 Mark II is purpose designed to drop completely inside commercially available GSM mounts. In this example, the sensor is installed in the SOMAG GSM-4000. This drop-in sensor design means that the complete 75-degree view of the view is unobstructed maximizing collection efficiency. The shaved sidewalls of the sensor allow room to install 200 or 150 megapixel medium format cameras on either side of the sensor. And the whole configuration based on its lightweight design can be quickly removed and replaced with ease of installation. So let's have a quick look at the available density at the maximum laser emission rates and the relative maximum AGL ranging performance. 
From this graph, the VQ580 is capable of over 35 points per meter squared at 400 meters AGL and 100 knots. Of course, density can be higher at lower altitudes and slower platform speeds. And this is evident in this next plot of the 480 at 40 knots with point densities in excess of 80 points per meter squared when operating at 400 meters AGO. The matrix scan pattern provides a raster-like point distribution that is excellent for ensuring near similar resolutions at the scan center as at the scan ends. You can clearly see in this graphical representation on the right with the matrix scan pattern, the maximum point density is actually in the interior of the scan where it matters the most, especially for right-of-way surveys. The lack of redundancy is best illustrated with a practical example. In this image, notice the evenly distributed points maximizing the effective use of the emitted laser pulses and ensuring consistent target resolution capability even at the scan ends. There is little reduction in resolution from the center of the scan outwards based on the matrix scan pattern and resultant point distribution. The point distribution can best be observed using RIPE parameter, our emission parameter software for determining the appropriate scan parameters for various sensors and applications. In this example, we see that flying low and fast at full FOV of 75 degrees is only possible with a scan velocity that can support the desired near uniform point distribution. In this case, 300 lines per second uh, at that full 75 degrees. In doing so, we have very effective use of all the emitted pulses across the entire swath width. There's excellent resolution as well as density as opposed to the density versus resolution compromise that sometimes has to be made with alternative scanning mechanisms and, re point, re and resultant point patterns. So you can see at the bottom here in this graph, we have a average point distance of about 15 centimeters and the line distance is 17 centimeters. And of course that point distance will, will diverge or converge as the scanner passes through Nader towards the scan ends. But when you look at a zoom in of both the, um, the middle and the ends of the scan, you can see that the distribution is relatively consistent. And this takes us to our first poll. Okay, I'll collect, I'll close the response. And it looks like about 40% uh, of you uh, utilize 50% uh, of your business for low altitude survey. And next poll, what application would you primarily consider using the VQ480 580 Mark II for? Is it power line surveying, pipeline surveying? environmental geophysical hazards, urban mapping, all of the above. Collecting the responses and I am closing the poll. And it looks like about 50% of you utilize these types of sensors for power line surveying. Um, whereas uh, another 30% are in the uh, urban mapping category. So what I'd like to do for the remainder of this presentation is look at the uh, um, the um, installation and, and application examples that uh, many of our clients use. Um, and in this case, uh, hopefully you will see something that resonates with you and your business objectives. So in this first example, we have a, um, a Cessna 180 um, owned by University of Alaska, and they've installed a um, Regal 580 sensor in a fixed mount. And if you notice uh, the installation example here in the lower right, corner of the slide, you can see that the bracket is attached to the sides of the sensor to suspend the sensor uh, between the seat rails. And so that the, the shaved sides of the sensor really allow a narrow installation configuration or a drop-in installation between the seat rails, which greatly reduces your costs with, with, with respect to uh, uh, making aircraft modifications. And they utilize this sensor for a number of different uh, applications. Um, of course, being Alaska full of mountains and glaciers, this is going to be one area that they spend a lot of time doing surveys of. And this is just a video cam showing an actual collection on, albeit a different glacier, um, 
but of course the concept's the same. Now these sensors, of course, are of lower range performance than what you would get with the uh, 780 and 1560 sensors. Um, and so in this case, they're doing some contour flying to maintain that fixed AGL capability. And this is a point cloud of another glacier uh, that uh, the University of Alaska has collected. And so they're utilizing the 580 sensor here um, and it is still more than capable of flying mountains uh, and getting excellent results at, at high altitude. In this installation example, one of our clients, Geo1, installed a VQ480 on an AS350. And they utilized a pod mount with a variable rotation option, which is really interesting. And what this does is allow them to get cliff slope coverage when flying in the mountain canyons. And this was particularly necessary because the mountains they were flying were actually the Himalayans, Himalaya mountains. Um, and of course, uh, flying a helicopter at those altitudes is, is very difficult. Um, and it's probably, if I recall from uh, my conversation with Ron Chappell, they flew at over 23,000 feet. Um, to collect data utilizing their VQ480. Another installation example, in this case, a very popular platform is the Cessna 206 by University of Alaska. Again, um, a slightly different install. You can see to the right, the sensor is uh, now suspended using uh, one, uh, another custom uh, mounting configuration, again, uh, dropped in between the seat rails with the shaved sides. And here's an example at 36 points per square meter of some sand dunes in Southeast California, uh, where they are modeling erosional processes uh, from about 500 meters AGO. These sensors are well suited for floodplain mapping and, and risk analysis. In this example, it's a close-up of a, of a riverine environment. You can see the, the trees off to the side uh, they're flying about 450 meters, 1,500 feet, and their objective was 25 points per square meter. This is uh, one edge of the, the project area. You can see the river there, and you can see the valley. And, of course, um, uh, the, the, the actual uh, river channel is somewhat obscured by the overlying vegetation. And if we run some classification algorithms, we can see the... The, um, the ground topology underneath via the bare earth DEM. So excellent vegetation penetration, uh, very high quality data um, and high density from an aircraft. Here's another installation example from GEO-1, in this case on a Bell 206. Um, what they've done with their 480 is they've co-mounted a phase one four band camera system. And this is utilized primarily for their power line uh, collection applications. And here's an example of that system on that aircraft uh, and the quality of the data that's collected. And you can see here they were traveling about 40 knots, 500 feet above the right of way, collecting 80 points per meter squared. Another application example, again, provided by our uh, client, the Geo1, um, they're here they had a opportunity to collect some data in Hong Kong at the uh, Kai Tak Airport and are looking for some obstruction mapping and some redevelopment on the, uh, on the runway itself. And in this case, you can see this is a uh, colorized map showing the, uh, the height model associated with the data that's been collected. Very high resolution, 100 points per meter square. In this case, trying to identify every vertical structure and tower. So, in conclusion, um, you know we, we have the VQ480 and the 580 are small mid-altitude sensors, and they provide a good balance of price versus the performance. Um, if your business doesn't need have a requirement to fly uh, large tracts of land for some of the larger collection programs. Uh, Perhaps one of these sensors, lower altitude sensors, lower price points is, is something that uh, you should consider. 
Um, it has a rugged industrial design that, that provides maximum reliability. Um, it's pretty clear when you, when you see that in, in the sensor pictures I showed earlier. It's a scalable sensor platform that enables maximum user configuration flexibility. So whether it's third-party INS solutions um, or a full sensor solution where we provide the INS and peripheral camera systems, the end user has the, an opportunity to define their own. Its unique compact sensor design enables innumerable, ins innumerable installation options, and that was demonstrated in the earlier slides based on the different aircraft and helicopter platforms and the types of installations that we saw. And we also have a new headquarters, if you're not familiar, uh, that is being constructed in Winter Garden, Florida. And the focus of this is to expand our services and calibration capability, particularly on the airborne segment. And so we'll be able to do a lot more uh, closer to home. And we also have available loaners uh, at Regal USA that helps maximize sensor uptime. And so while we do appreciate the investment in, in sensors, um, we do have some comprehensive support programs that allow us to make sure our clients are up for as often as possible. And if you'd like to see a two minute version of a fly through and some of the key features, um, you can click on this link down below when we make the uh, presentation available in another week or so. Um, and you can uh, see that as well. And so before we wrap up with some questions, I will post another poll. So based on the application examples, what areas do you focus on? 43% of you are operating in many of those applications. So that's great. Now I'll open the floor up for a few minutes for some questions. Um, I already have one question from, from an earlier comment I made, and that was, uh, why does my totals add up to more than 100% of my polls? And of course, uh, somebody answered because you can answer more than one of them. So we utilize these sensors quite a bit um, in, uh, it, with respect to uh, integrations, um, their compact form factor allows for uh, uh, no internal cameras per se, but definitely external. But there is an option uh, for an internally mounted uh, INS solution um, with the APX20. And so in that case, you wouldn't have the IMU bolted to the top. So one of the questions was, how does the interface of the phase one four band connect to the shooting mechanism of the VQ480? Well, in, in this case, what we do is we connect directly to the IX controller um, and the flight management system would then uh, send a trigger pulse uh, to the controller, which would then uh, interface with the camera. And of course, uh, that interface is a USB 3 um, format. And if you have no more questions, um, then I would say thank you very much for tuning in to our webinar today. For more information on the VQ480-580 Mark II sensors and all our 3D airborne 3D mapping solutions, uh, please feel free to send me an email or call me at 407-414-8669. Have a great day.